Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today, DPG here is about to talk. This is going to talk to you about top 10 PS2 very video games. So let's do this. Number 10, Max Payne. Max Payne is one of the greatest crime by Rockstar. One of my best favorites, personal. Um, sets um story for Max Payne to find a uh, killer who kills his wife and his baby, and he goes on a rampage. And then he could just he just kills like a bunch of gangsters that hangs around in his New York station, the building, the clubs, what whatever is all chaos and yeah, so Max Payne is number ten. Alright, number nine. Star Wars Battlefront two. Star Wars Battlefront two is has been number nine. The campaign is good. But um it's just a lack of when you play in a space mode, like in a in a galaxy up space up space. It's just like, I don't know how to describe it, but it's just, it is fun, but it's just lacky so much, and then it's just, you know, you get to end up crashing into the ships, but, and you know, I'm trying to complete the objectives, it's just, I don't know how to explain that, so, Star Wars Battlefront 2 is number 8. Alright, number 8, Monster Jam Maximum Destruction. This is probably one of the best Monster Jam I ever played, well, probably one of the best team ready games, it was where you control the monster, um, trucks, um, you control the monster. You you, uh, you control the monster trucks. One of my personal favorites is Spider-Man. Obviously, Spider-Man is one of my personal favorite, and uh, it has been number eight. It's probably one of the best ones. Um, there is no campaign. It's just like arcade. You just unlock some stuff. You get your high score, and the uh, like, the sound, like the design, is pretty loud. Especially if you play it, if you blast down your home. Dear speaker, my goodness, like, you're just gonna blow your mind. It's Monster Jam is, is number eight. Alright, number seven, Spongebob Squarepants Revenge of the Flying Dutchman. Um, this was the best kids game for anybody to play. It's not hard. I mean, it's kind of hard, especially after the first level, but, you know, just having a hard time, like, you know, trying to fight some bad guys, like, in, like silly cartoonish games for the kids from the Nickelodeon games, and... THQ games is actually one of the best games I played when I was a kid. It's actually pretty fun. Uh, it centers SpongeBob. Um, one of the like in an early the game, he was playing fetch with Gary the snail, and Gary accidentally finds the follow the flying Dutchman, so he was released. So even after you collect all the title, like all your all the title that is spelled SpongeBob's name, he will just come out and like hypnotizes like his closest people to him. So he took Gary first, and then he's trying to like explain to everybody what's going on. Like, you know, I need your help, I need this, I need that. And um, so you control, you control SpongeBob. He's not really that hard to control, but it's just the levels are really challenging. I, it's kind of like that. So, and the voice of talent, the voice of the actors, actresses, you cannot forget that. Like, you cannot forget about them because they brought this childhood to you. It's the greatest. And I say SpongeBob SquarePants that has to be number seven. All right, number six. Everything or nothing. Total seven. Um, I did not play this yet, but I did. Did I play this? Yeah, I, I probably I did. Um, it's a third-person James Bond game. I love the Bonds for the PS2 game for the PS2. Um, it wasn't that hard. It was just more of a challenging after like H on the fire and night fire. So this has to be number six for everything or nothing. So everything or nothing is a. Uh, it's a great. It's the first time you featured in a combat movie. You could do much, bunch of combat actions in third person, um, not first person. It's just third person. That's pretty much about it. Um, he fights. Um, not fights. Well, actually, we do get back Jaws for the first time after. Well, Jaws appears in Everything and Nothing, and he appears in Double Seven Legends, and so Everything and Nothing is number six. Number five, Nightfire. Nightfire is first person. Uh, James Bond game. Actually, I loved it. I enjoyed it. It wasn't that hard, but um, the controls is just you know the look. It was just a hard look to like do look up and down. And it's just you know really hard to control. Um, uh, if you just press L one, it's just like similar to N sixty four, uh, Golden Eye. But you know, not that complaining about it. But it's just really hard to get the the movement. The right the R three. And it's just a the L2 with the button. It's just or L no L1 is to like hold down the aim assist and that's it. So that Nightfire is number five. Night 
number four, Spider Man. This was the greatest like superhero first first time you play. Spider Man was one of the greatest games based on the film. Uh, it has like many villains to like to come to towards Spider Man. This was probably one of the greatest games as a kid. Um, then I didn't had any problem controlling this, playing this game, but I think after like the first level and the second level, then I thought that was a game, but then. I was like, oh, there's more, so I was like, I think this game is way too hard for me, so I think I will play, I will play all these games again sometime, hopefully this summer if I can. Um, I know many of y'all asking like, oh, how you stream, you know, Elgato for the PS2, I searched that on YouTube, and I think I had to look at it again, and I think I had to look at it, how to stream PS3 again, one more time, I didn't take a look at those two, two, uh, two more times, and then we're like, oh, that's how you do it, and then, yeah. That's number four for Spider Man. Um, I really liked it. Not bad. I actually like it. It's actually pretty good. All right, number three, Yu Gi Oh! Duels of the Roses. Maybe you like anime so much, but I believe this is the first anime that ever released for the PS2, because only like Pokemon like released for the N64. That's the first anime on the N64. So Yu Gi Oh! Duels of the Roses. This brings back a lot of memories. Um, it's the first time you actually playing with your cards, like not in your hand, but more like you controlling. The PlayStation 2 controller, and at first when it comes to me, I thought it was like, okay, what I need to do, what I need to do, and I was like, okay, okay did I do this right, did I do this wrong, what are they doing, because, you know, when you're watching, like, Yu-Gi-Oh!, you understand, like, oh, that's how you do it, and then, like, I was like to myself, oh, you're not doing that correctly, you need to do that again, and I was like, oh, damn, and I was like, so I might have to play Yu-Gi-Oh, do sort of roles again, so, do a sort of roles is number three of Yu-Gi-Oh, and Yu-Gi-Oh was definitely one of my greatest childhood games I ever played. Alright, number two, Star Wars Battlefront. So, Star Wars Battlefront was released on 2004, I would play that game endless and endless and endless, endless hours based on my childhood. I love it, I love it, I love it. Um, the campaign was awesome. The, the third and first person mode was not that bad. The like, um, no likey whatsoever. It's just really nice, you know, that, like, if you're on a planet, like, there's a whole environment around you. you rather, you're in Naboo, like, you see all the trees and the mountains around you or the ground. And, you know, if you're either in Hoth, like, you see all the palaces around you, like, that's the environment. So think of it as stars about from the planets. That's your environment. Like that's pretty much about like the stars about front because everything is like environment around you. Like especially if you're on a planet or in space. I should mention that too. Like space, there's a lot of environment around you. So stars about front is number two. Number one, Agent Under Fire. This is probably one of the best James Bond games, the best PS2 games I ever played behind stars about front in. The Star Wars Battlefront 2, but AG on, on the Fire is definitely my number one. I'll tell you why. I think because it's a lot of fun. It's just it's like, you know, first time introducing for the PS2, although it has been introduced for the N64 Golden Eye, because it was a lot of fun for four player too. But if you do have an Xbox, then I highly recommend like the first Xbox. Then if you want to get like AG on the Fire, Night Fire, everything or nothing. Like, if you want to have a challenge for four player, that's awesome. But if it's just two player, I think it would be more fun to just get like the four player. That, that supports it all, and you cannot, like, I have to say, like, AG on the Fire has to be number one, and I believe that's my opinion, because I like first-person shooters, I like role-playing games, I like, um, like, that's not, like, Monster Jam, Monster Jam is, like, completely different, but seriously, though, I highly, like, that's number one, AG on the Fire, that's my number one. What do you think? Do you agree with my list, top 10 PS2 games? Let me know in the comment section below. Alright guys, that is it for DBG um, Top 10 PS2. Uh, this video will be uploaded shortly. Because, um, yeah, it's going to be uploaded shortly. Like, less than, I don't know how long, but it's going to upload. I promise you guys. Anyways, thank you guys for tuning in this video. Top 10 PS2 ga video games. Um, don't forget to give it a like, comment, subscribe. And let me know in the comment section below, what's your Top 10 PS2 games? Anyway, you guys. I'll see you all next time when, I, when we talk about top 5 2016 films. I think that would be on a Friday. And, um, yeah, guys, it's been real. Peace out.